Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And today we are gonna discuss actual ways that we can help bring down the nervous system. So a lot of times when you're chronically ill or you're experiencing really traumatic or severe symptoms that are looping upon themselves, a lot of times we know that there is much anxiety involved with this and the fight or flight system is sending danger signals. And you may say, well, I'm not really experiencing anxiety. I'm experiencing pain or I'm experiencing this. Whenever we have something that's looping, that's distressing to you. So is it distressing? That's the question. And if it is, you know that the nervous system's involved and the fight or flight nervous system is turned on and you're experiencing that uh, fight or flight danger signal in your body in some way. It could be through pain, it could be through anxiety, it could be through dizziness, it could be through uh, brain fog, it could be whatever symptom that you're experiencing that is completely distressing, we need to turn down the nervous system. So some people are mentally ramping up their nervous systems and some people there's something physical physiologically happening that is ramping up the system regardless of what's happening if your symptoms are causing you distress and they're stressful to you then that means we need to no matter what settle the nervous system so how do we bring a nervous system from sympathetic mode into parasympathetic mode. We're gonna, we're gonna brainstorm a ton of ways here because not every way is gonna work for every person. And then maybe we'll do some sequent videos uh, describing in detail how to do them. So let's just go over at a high level today and then we'll take some of the best ones and break them down in detail. Okay, so the first one is breathing. Clearly, breathing is going to settle your system. This is the one that everyone uses for a reason, right? It grounds us in our body. So, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, when we exhale longer than our inhale, that's where we get the release. So, our heart rate actually will increase as we breathe in. And when we exhale, our heart rate decreases. So if we can lengthen the exhale every time, or at least be having a long exhale, even if the inhale is as long as the exhale, we just want a long exhale, that's where we find this lowering of the heart rate, okay? So um, one of the ones that I like, I find when you're focusing on your breathing, and if you really are experiencing a lot of distressing, symptoms or increased heart, heart rate or anxiety or whatever. Um, it often just stresses you out and you feel like you can't breathe um, properly and you're not really getting into a rhythmic breathing. So my favorite one for breathing is the alternate nostril and we can go through this in another video but I like this one because when we do it, we're focused on the left and right brain, which I think is really helpful for balancing and bringing our brain back online. Also, we go slower rhythmically and we do seem to have a longer inhale and a longer exhale. So I think that this one works really well. So give that one a try when you're doing your breathing. Okay, so that's, that's the obvious one. The next one is there's some movements that will help trigger um, because we, we can't always just use mental words. We have to actually talk in a body language. So breathing talks in a body language. What else? Yawning does. So how do we trigger a yawn? Often we open our mouth and 
sometimes the yawn will just trigger. Sometimes um, if you say R, like R, like R. You'll trigger a yawn. So try that. Yawning signals to the body on a very deep biological level, you're okay, you're safe. So doing this four, five, six, ten times in a row, really try to trigger the yawn response and bring things down. Okay, we can also use our eyes to bring things down. When we're in fight or flight, we're often very focused, very narrowly focused. Our senses are heightened. And even if you're having brain fog or your derealization or depersonalization, other um, senses get heightened and usually the eyes will. Um, so it, they're, they're focusing narrowly on things that matter when you're in fight or flight. So often if you can just look like, look straight ahead, but then let your eyes rest out and look at your peripheral vision. So just look at something straight ahead and then let your eyes kind of see out as far as they can to the sides, as far as they can and soften them. Really soften the eyes and let them look out to the sides. Even though you're, you're appearing to look straight ahead, you kind of soften everything. This is a really good movement. It's peripheral vision and it tells the body to calm down. If you can do this on the horizon or a lake or in a forest or somewhere where you can see farther, the farther the better. This is a really good softening eye exercises that communicates to the body on a biological level um, to bring the nervous system down. Um, there's something called the Valsalva maneuver. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, it's more like a bearing down. So it's in between like your pelvic bones and your sits bones. It's almost referred to often if you kind of like let your chest out, let your stomach out and like imagine the pelvic floor touching the ground. So it's kind of like a almost a bearing down as if you were gonna poo, but like you stretch your stomach out, you, you drop your pelvic floor, and it's kind of a little bit of a bearing down there. That movement, if you can get the hang of it, you can always look it up. Um, I believe it's called the Valsalva movement, but it's like a bearing down, it's your pelvic floor muscle. Uh, in between your sits bones, just kind of touching the floor. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is biologically another signal to your body to bring it down out of fight or flight into parasympathetic. Okay, so for this one, I like to, to get my chest, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to try in the upper abdomen above your belly button you want to push your chest out try to really focus on pushing this area up here out and let it go soft and loose once it's out i know it's tempting to push this part out but really try to get up as high as you can You can kind of hold your breath when you do it and push out and try to soften. Often you'll hear grumbling in here. You will hear um, all kinds of like gas. It might cause you to burp. All of this is good, like releasing that tension there, burping, having the gas go, having the grumbles go, softening up there, really pushing out. You can even like stretch back as you do it to really push that out far and get that release in your upper digestive tract and the solar plex region where a lot of uh, these messages of fear are being sent from. Yeah, so burping, the gas, letting all that tension out of this solar plex and upper abdominal region is gonna be really soothing and helpful. 
The other thing you can do is you can like hug yourself, okay? Sometimes um, a calming way is to put one arm here underneath your arm, one arm kind of over on your shoulder. <sighs> Hold yourself, you can do little rocks. This is really calming and often people who, you know, will be focused on trauma, really needing to communicate to the body, this is a really good way to do it. So like full hugs, this kind of a hug. The other moves that a lot of people can try are hand on your heart. As you breathe, hand right over. You can put a second hand on your forehead this settles. This goes from our mind to our heart. This brings our mind and our heart into alignment. You can just feel the sensation that happens between the communication here. You can also place your hand on your heart and one on your stomach, right? Your low stomach, your mid stomach, or your upper stomach, depending on where you're feeling anything, or try all. This brings our gut and our heart together. So the gut, the heart, the mind, mind, body, and soul, right? All of this, your emotions, your thinking, um, and your feeling senses, we want to connect them. So these are good ways to do that at a very biological level. So that's another thing that you could try. Obviously sleeping is going to bring you down, deep rest, deep guided meditations that really get you down. Um, so bringing that nervous system right down. So you could try from sleep to rest to deep guided meditation. Um, often when you're having extreme symptoms and they're, they're causing you to feel urgent, it's very hard to do that, but um, necessary. So the more you can sleep, the more you can get deep rest, the more you can do deep meditation, the better off you're gonna be. Now, if you find that difficult um, to just lay there because then your symptoms go crazy, uh, you can do some slight movement with that sort of relaxation rest and people will find yoga really soothing. Now you could do like a very relaxing type yoga and then you can try sort of a medium yoga but real, very relaxing and then as you go, slow your poses down, get into a restorative yoga. So that's the goal is to get into those poses that you hold for five minutes or longer, just very restorative poses. So you can look up restorative yoga online, restorative yoga for stress, restorative yoga for, you know, what uh, dizziness, restorative yoga for anxiety, restorative yoga for these types of things, and hold those really relaxing poses. Um, but you're using your body, you're, you're still in movement. So sometimes that feels a little uh, easier for people. Tai Chi, again, we're moving energy. So anything that like would shift the energy would be good. Slowing down. So purposely slowing down your breathing, which we talked about, purposely slowing down your words. Slow them down. Slow down the words in your head. The voice that's speaking to you, slow it down. The words that you say out loud, slow them down right? All the thoughts, slow them down. Walk slower. Slow down your walking. So as you notice yourself moving up to the pace of this frantic energy of symptoms of fight or flight nervous system, purposely bring it back. Slow it down. Soften your breath. Slow down your talking. Slow down your thinking. Slow down your movement. This will help um, slow things down. Another thing that's really good is grounding. So right now this is no good because it's the off season where you can't go sit on the ground or walk barefoot because we're heading into winter. Um, but if you can, if you live somewhere or you can do it, sitting on the earth, 
on the ground, on the grass, laying down on the grass, just laying there, this is the best grounding that you can do. You are magnetically charged to the earth. You're going to get those negative ions. You're going to get the grounding from planet earth. Uh, you can go barefoot. You can walk on the grass barefoot or the sand and the water even better. This is a great thing you can do if it's that time of year. Um, if not, even just sitting outside is better than inside with a winter jacket on and just breathing the fresh air, grounding yourself with nature, with the earth, even if it's too cold or snowy to sit on the ground. You can use warming tactics. Heating pads will often soothe and bring things down. Hot baths, hot showers, the relaxing heat will bring things down, okay? Hot teas, having a break, drinking a warm tea, having a hot bath. If you can add magnesium to the bath, Epsom salt, that's even going to be more soothing, more relaxing. Okay, so these types of heat, if you can get out in the sun in the summer, sunbathing, allowing the heat to warm you, heat is always gonna be really great for bringing the body down. If you can get close to somebody that you love, your child, your spouse, heart on heart action, a beautiful hug. If you can lay with your spouse, even skin to skin, heart to heart, no clothes in between you, and have another person who's regulated, regulating you. Often we will begin to regulate, our heartbeat will begin to regulate with somebody who has a regulated heartbeat and a regulated nervous system. So being in close contact and being skin to skin, heart to heart, uh, if possible with people who are regulated, our system will often begin to regulate to the most stable system. If you have pets and animals, holding them, stroking them, talking to them, cuddling them, playing with them, this is connection. We definitely long for connection and touch and so that's very regulating. So animals, family members, people, but I find pets are just very easy to hold and to stroke and to sit with. So another great tool. Um, if you have an exercise ball, I like to use this for a couple of things. You can stretch on it, often stretching backwards over the ball, like this and stretching out your chest muscles allowing this allowing pose where everything's kind of stretched and a little rocking this sends messages of safety you would never lie like that if you didn't feel safe so this communicates to the body that you're safe you're opening you're okay right you're not shutting down and closing off. You're opening and you're safe. You're trusting. The next thing would be on the, on the ball is just bouncing. So I like to sit on the ball and just a light, a light little bounce. It's almost like a trampoline. It's almost good. It's something that you could do instead of a trampoline, like for your limb system. It's very soothing. And when I had small babies, I would sit on the ball and do this tiny up and down movement instead of the rocking. And they loved it. They would fall asleep immediately. This would calm them more than anything when they were little. So I know that this works um, to relieve and stress and just put any crying baby, including yourself. So you just sit, it's very relaxing, no hard movements. You're basically just lifting up and down ever so lightly, right? This is just a very soothing motion. If you want to do more, you can. If you want to do more, then you can. If you want to do less, then you can. So again, another really soothing thing that you can do. Okay, so now using the mind. Remember, the way we talk and the messages that we send ourselves are gonna be really key 
to slowing things down. So not this, oh no, oh my God, what's happening? I'm never gonna heal, blah, blah, blah. All these messages of danger, like the, the thought messages of danger that we send to ourselves by getting worried, frantic, and overwhelmed and sending these uh, messages will, again, skyrocket your nervous system. So even if you are feeling physical sensations all over your body that are worrying, it's better to send messages to consciously catch those negative ones and replace them by saying, this is just an overreactive nervous system, your symptoms will die down, You're going to be okay, you're safe, it's okay to sit, it's okay to breathe, I've got you, the universe has got you, you're gonna be okay, you will get through this. These are calming messages, right? You don't have to say, I'm healthy, I'm healed. Sometimes we don't believe those, but sending calming messages, like everything's gonna be okay, your body's working hard, um, take it easy, take a deep breath, you're okay, you're safe, we can do this, you've got this. You know, these types of messages are so much better than what we ultimately start sending ourselves when we're in danger mode. Okay, some other things that you could do, again, if it's summer, or if you have access to this kind of stuff, you could swimming. Swimming is very soothing. It's very soothing to the nervous system. So swimming, floating, these kinds of things are very, very soothing. And if you can do them, it will help to settle the nervous system, especially that just really gentle swimming, the really gentle gliding, the uh, really gentle going up and down under the water, the really gentle floating, all of this is really calming to the nervous system. Um, people do have anxious, uh, or people do who have access to float tanks, love them. Now, if you're really symptomatic, I wouldn't recommend locking yourself in a float tank. I think that kind of could spike anxiety if that's already what you're feeling. But if you're out in the open air and you are able to get into a body of water, swim and float, this is going to be so soothing for you. Okay, the other thing that's really helpful is relaxation meditation where you focus on each body part. So you start with your toes, you fully relax them. To your ankles, you fully relax them. You move all the way up your body and you try to make it like a, a limp wet noodle. You try to let go of tension in every single area of the body as you move up the body. This is very, very helpful. You could also try somatic tracking where instead of trying to fight or flee or run away from the symptom or ignore the symptom, you turn into it with curiosity and you track it. Meaning you just notice where it is in your body Notice what it feels like, what it looks like, what the color would be, its shape, its size, where it is, and we just watch with curiosity. We don't try to do anything. It's called somatic tracking. I have some videos on that. You can look it up and you can um, do these somatic tracking exercises to it sort of remind your body that you're okay, that you're safe, that these sensations are not dangerous, they're more neutral. You can do things for your nervous system as simple as orienting to your environment. So looking around the room, gazing outside, just far, close, wide glances, noticing something, noticing the shape of it, noticing the color, letting your eyes fixate on it, letting your eyes do the peripheral gaze where you just relax, just orienting to your environment, just you are here in time and space, you are here, right here, and orienting to everything around you and getting a sense of safety from all the objects and all the nature and all everything that surrounds you. You can try engaging in other things that aren't your symptoms. So you can use the distraction technique. Um, you can get involved in a hobby. You can get involved in doing something around your house. You can get involved with something that takes your mind off of your symptoms that's going to hold your interest and give you some pleasure 
or joy. So it could be something as basic as washing the dishes or folding laundry to a something as watching your favorite show or listening to your favorite music or painting or doing an activity or a craft or cooking, whatever, gardening, whatever it is. Um, something that will engage your senses, will engage you, and will distract you from focusing inward too much, um, and instead focusing on things that can give you a sense of safety and pleasure, and um, where our mind goes from laser focused in to more focused out. If you want to check some of these things and see what activities or what sorts of things that I just said work for you, if you have HeartMath, if you have that HeartMath app and the little apparatus that you, you put on, you can always do these and find out what your heart rate variability is for each one and see like what are your tops, what are working for you, but you often won't need that. You can just get a sense of what makes you feel a lot better and what makes you feel a lot worse. And this is more at a high level, just because something makes you feel worse one time doesn't mean it's not gonna work if you stick with it over time. Often new things um, will always make us feel worse, but then with enough repetition, uh, they'll start to work and make you feel better. So just noticing which ones really work the best for you as you go along. Another thing that you could do is TRE, um, which is a shaking method that you can do for trauma. It's very relaxing. It talks to the body. It allows the body to let go of some of this excess trauma and anxiety. And uh, it's a very easy, gentle, subtle movement. And I have a video on that, so you can watch how to do it. Um, I might do another one because it is a very useful tool. So TRE, which is trauma releasing exercises, and um, it's a shaking, it talks to the body. It's, it's on a body level, you know, to help with some of this overactive, overstimulated nervous system that does not feel safe. Okay, shifting focus. This is kind of like what we talked about with hobbies and other interests, but shifting focus, or when we notice we're really fixated on our symptoms, um, we just wanna be neutral where we don't try to fix them at all. We don't do anything that would try to fix them. We don't do anything that would um, have us run from them or distract from them. We don't sit around and just fear them and obsess about them. So just like the focus, we just wanna not fix, not just allow, just allow, just practice conscious allowing. This is often the hardest one to do, but over time becomes the most useful and reminds us that we're safe. If you can go for calming walks in nature, this is gonna be great. Just slow walks in nature, take a look at your environment, take a look at your surroundings. Um, this is really healing, really grounding, reminds our nervous system that we're safe, uh, a really calming place to you, a nice wide open space that you enjoy and that feels good and that suits you. This is a really, a really great thing to help to balance and bring down that nervous system. Trying to focus on life, whether it's just having a simple dinner with your family, um, going about your routine, uh, chatting or conversing about something other than all the craziness that you feel, uh, getting involved in life in some way, um, joy, future planning, anything that just like gets us out of what we, what we're feeling and what we're obsessing on and into life. This is amazing for the nervous system because the nervous system feels safe when it's just able to live and able to participate in life activities. So sometimes we have to push ourselves to do that but after a while, we can get kind of in the flow with it and we forget about what's happening. And this is the best way to regulate a nervous system that's overactive. So these are just some of the ways um, that I've used in the past and that I thought of today and brainstormed today for this video, but there's probably many others that work for you. 
and um, it's really important to continue to try them. Even if you feel like nothing's working, even if you feel like your body is doing this physically, physiologically, um, mentally, if it's doing it without your permission or without any feedback from you, over time, sending the right messages of safety will help, will help uh, decrease that danger response. And so it's often just continue to do it, even if it doesn't feel good, even if it doesn't feel right, even if it's not helping, and eventually it adds up. Um, and especially if you ever get a moment where it works, where like you go from like um, whatever you would rate yourself, like you're at, you're at a 10 out of 10, and you're able to like bring it through something to like a six or bring it down a couple of points and just really you feel for a moment much better and you get a little bit of hope and a little bit of relief and you feel like, oh, like I'm going to be okay. If you ever get that sense, that's the moment. That is the moment right there to start sending yourself positive messages, to start um, bolstering that confidence that you have in yourself, to start saying your affirmations because now you can believe them. Whenever you can get a little bit of the feeling, that's when we want to blow up that feeling. That's when we want to do the visualizations. That's when we want to say the affirmations because it's not about saying them if we don't believe them. It's about saying them when we can feel them. So whenever you get a moment where you can feel it, really um, say, you're doing great. This is working. Like really build yourself up. You're amazing. This is working. You are going to be okay. Like, because then you can believe it. So Remember, you know, all those affirmations when you're feeling your worst sometimes are counterproductive because you're trying to believe something that you don't believe. But when you can get a minute, when something works in a way that gives you that sense of relief or peace or this is all going to be okay, if you ever get those moments, even if they're fleeting, take those moments. That's when we say the affirmations. That's when we really try to focus and build our confidence and our belief and faith in the process and faith in yourself because that more than anything that feeling is going to propel you into more of it so i hope this has been helpful i hope this has been um, good in reminding you things activities things that you can do to bring down an overactive nervous system and to continue to try even if you know you're not having much success because you will and then it will snowball on each other um, just as the other is true if you're if your messages of danger are increasing that snowballs the other way will snowball it just takes longer right our brain is trying to protect us and we need to help it and it's it's a harder process to unwind but it's totally possible and with your continued um, effort and just your continued commitment to try to lower the nervous system, you're gonna be okay. You are gonna be okay. You can do this. So take a breath, try to regulate your central nervous system, and I will see you in the next video.